it's going to quickly drop in efficiency. So unless you either have the target immobilized via an anti-tank half-track, you're better off. Or of course some close quarters use it, you're better off with panzer checks or something similar. But that's not to say it was a bad idea, and it's certainly a novel idea. Very novel, and we see the infantry once more seizing this building, opening fire on the panzer grenadiers. We now have a bit of light cover to use some bolts, I suspect, from the anti-tank grenades itself. And we see more incendiary grenades going off in this building. A quite sturdy building, apparently, even though it's wood, it's apparently not catching much on fire from all those incendiary grenades being lobbed at it over and over and over again. Not targeting this, a bit of a bad maneuver since you must be aware that it increases the recharge time for the abilities and the grenades. And we see the munitions after it has been wrecked now. The pants grenades are once more getting suppressed by the concentrate machine gun fire from the Bren carrier. A bit too close though, and could risk, yes, an anti-tank grenade knocking out the second Bren carrier. Infantry section deeply wounded, should get away once more. And we also see a casualty clearing station has been set up by Fox Battalion, meaning casualty rates will be down and there will be a less of a s rate of attrition on the British. The Stuart tank has been once more made operable by the Sappers, who are looking to make a move with it once more. We also see a 17-pounder anti-tank gun, sorry I have not mentioned this earlier, but it hasn't really had any relevance since there's not been much for it to actually do any damage to except that munition soft track, which was beyond its reach. Let's see what Fox Battalion is up to. Nothing at the moment. And a lot less company command points. Stuart opening fire on the Panzer Grenadiers. The Stuart will receive some buffs in the next patch, including increased accuracy against infantry to match that of its accuracy against soldier armor infantry, that is Panzer Grenadiers and their comrades in arms, the Tank Buster Infantry and Heavy Assault Grenadiers. Panzer Grenadiers. So there you have it. And we see veterans to tune up for the Lieutenant. He's certainly going to be a great asset to the British, although he might want to pull back here for repairs. Anti-tank half-track moving in, mobilizing the Stuart light tank before being knocked out itself. And Fox Battalion not sending its sappers over to repair it. But we now see heavy artillery fire, meaning the British commander has gone for the Royal Canadian Artillery Doctrine. Meaning his officers can act as forward observers, call in artillery, which can be quite devastating. Plus, he can also get supercharged round for his artillery and his mortars, meaning they'll have a much longer range. And we see a Wirbelwind flak Panzer, one of the many flak Panzer variations the Germans made using the Panzer IV, the other being the Ostwind, which is of course also in company views, another being the Möbelwagen, which actually looked a lot more curious, but which was equipped either with a 37mm gun like the Ostwind, or I do believe a or more regular Flak 30, which is the single barrel version of the Flak feeling. And there were of course many other variants, including one based on the same chances as the tank used for the Marder and Hetzer. But I think we'll leave at this at that for now. And we see the Stuart being still left up there completely immobilized, and of course it's going to receive a Nice welcome from anti-tank grenades, doing a lot of damage to it. Sappers now finally trying to move into a tent, but too late. Fox Battalion waited too long, and the steward and its crew paid the price. A poor officer lying atop the burning wreckage. A grim fate for such a noble officer. But such is war. Sometimes officers make bad mistakes in prioritizing what to do in this case a priority ought to have been repairing the steward light tank flak field flak panzer wirbelwind conducting a bit of overwatch protecting this area and looks like the schwimmwagen is once more on the move apparently hadn't moved in a long time must have been forgotten but seems like he has a plan for it now let's go back to Kulkasa perhaps he's chosen a doctrine yes it has indeed it is Luftwaffe of course because of the wirbelwind and we also see a Luftwaffe squad, Luftwaffe field division 
What division? I don't know. Greece have been some troops moved out from the Luftwaffe by that time during 1945 as recruits were moved out from the air bases simply because the army was actually lacking troops. This did indeed cause some troubles as some were actually found it beneath them to fight in the infantry divisions because they'd hoped they'd be doing something else. But setting up a 88mm Flak 36 anti aircraft gun going to be quite effective, going to be able to deal nicely with infantry and tanks, but for some reason actually with the next patch that's actually going to be changed against infantry. I'm not entirely sure why it wasn't like it was that devastating and still more useful than the flak feeling which is currently a bit of a hazard to use and it's much too easy to actually knock out considering its cost. Such is the R thing from now. The flak pants taking spear at fire. The Flag 36 holding the line for now, cause causing one infantry kill for now, taking PF fire as well. Looks like the 17 pounders back trying to get some fire in as well. Another mortar pit up, that seems a bit excessive. Opening fire most likely on the flag gun. Almost hitting, but not quite. Hands going to be charging forwards in open cover, no support whatsoever. But pulling back before things get too dicey, and the flag crew is suffering heavily from mortar fire. And the crew members are lying spread around, perhaps one in a bit of a disco pose. I'm not entirely sure, just an unfortunate position. The flag 36 now left behind, no attempts to recruit from either side, although now the British are making a Dash for it, covered by mortar fire, now caught out in the open by the flag fielding. One certainly should be careful with such matters, not using the cover provided there. And for s oh no, he's using his infantry section to actually seize it. You shouldn't use a almost dead infantry section to actually seize a gun, because as you saw, it was quickly wiped out and he lost a infantry section in the process, meaning he's just needs to actually replace that, which is a 450 manpower, so not a good trade at all, and one should really try to take such things into consideration. Otherwise, there's always a good rule of thumb, always use four-man squads to take points, only use less, unless you are extremely desperate, or you can get something really cheap, like an infantry, or like pioneers or sappers to do it, do not use an almost wiped out infantry team or section to do so. Cromwell now making a dash for things having knocked out the flag. Panzer out taking on the flag, feeling, hitting the wall, protecting it first. Further shots going off from the flag, feeling not penetrating the side armor. Looks like the Cromwell is quite keen and only dealing with the flag, feeling not going in for the infantry, which are completely unprotected at the moment. Could easily suffer heavily to this Cromwell com tank, which is actually taking a bit of damage from the flag feeling, it seems. Having some knock in penetrating, or at least shaking up the crew inside. Flag feeling now wrecked, taking fire from the light anti-tank half track, which destroys the engine, allowing the Panzer Grenadiers to move in with anti-tank grenades. Now in fact completely immobilized and knocked out. And this is certainly one of the dangers of moving in tanks unsupported by infantry. You can, for example, risk it being immobilized and fall and prey to infantry with anti-tank weapons. But sadly, some commanders still rush them in. I do believe I've also shown a game where two Shermans rushing into my positions got knocked out just as easily or easier even. But that's for another time. One flak feeling down for will cast a space defenses, which is certainly going to leave him vulnerable to an infantry attacks. Light anti-tank after moving out along with a shrimp wagon and several panzer grenadiers, a Luftwaffe field squad hanging around behind. The British securing the central position, now they hold all of the victory points and most of the map. And we see a priest self-propelled artillery gun. The priest being an um, uh, self-propelled artillery gun of American make. The British had their own version, the Bishop, which was actually completely enclosed. Firing directly at the Panzer Elite base, knocking out the poor Luftwaffe troops. An inglorious end to a bunch of not entirely enthusiastic troops of the Luftwaffe, although some were. 
But there was a lot of variation in quality of these Luftwaffe troops. Now we see the infantry section with dual Bren guns trying to take up the fight with the Panzer Grenadiers, but really should consider getting out of there before they are cut down. It's not worth losing 450 manpower. Now they're trying to take on Fortune Jaegers. Oh dear, oh dear, get out of there, fuck battalion troops. Oh no. Cut down by FG42 fire from the Fortune Jaeger. Looks like Fox Battalion is a bit too reckless with its infantry, in particular the Morph Ground. Down once he only has one infantry section along with a Piat Sapper section. Certainly dangerous and a captain running around a bit. We see mortar fights to protect this they central victory point. Fire. And we see the Cromwell rush once more going for the other flag field. Seems like he's very keen on knocking out those base defenses. For what reasons I cannot say he's apparently not going to actually deal with the infantry or try to take back the map. And I suspect this will once more end badly for the Cromwell and its crew. As we see the anti-tank half-track moving up and once more immobilizing the Cromwell tank, leaving its engine on fire and its tracks useless as the Panzer Grenadiers are once more moving in to do their dirty deeds with anti-tank grenades, lopping them at the Cromwell and knocking it out once more. Certainly unfortunate armor attacks that Fox Battalion are employing and they really should revise them I think. Now we see infantry moving out without officer supervision, not really going to do a lot. It would be moving a lot slower and be much easier targets out in the open. Trying to see who's cover between the ruins and we now see heavy artillery fire from the British landing in. Anti-tank half track knocked out. We see heavy hearts of fire raining in on the logistic company trying to take it out. The priest firing away and we see a Cromwell command tuck tank, not tuck, tank for the British. Don't know where tuck come from. I suppose it must be a halfway attempt at Danish, although we say tank. That's another matter and we see a captain seizing the central victory point but is forced away from the Fortune Jaeger. Bravely seizing the point, floating a lot of munitions, or manpower, not munitions, manpower, although I'm not sure why Kulkasa is doing that, he really should consider getting some more things on the field. Instead of just floating around so much manpower and fuel, he could certainly be using something a bit more constructive to launch a attack on the British positions. And we see a Panzer Jaeger command going up, so this means either armored cars or martyrs. Mardus can be quite effective against British emplacements, so might be that. The Fortune Jaeger taking the sense of position. British fire raining in on their own troops, trying to hit them. Fortune Jaeger, oh, heavy casualties for the Fortune Jaeger, forcing them to retreat. And another mortar round hitting on the British, apparently doing no damage this time. Schwimmmark and seizing territory in the east once more. Panzer Completely undisturbed as the British are quite focused on the center on what is closest to their forward positions with rather a lot of artillery hanging around. Casualty clearing